in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. A very warm welcome to our Sunday morning uh, worship here in the parish of Tidenham with St Brubbles and Hillsfield. I'm James Parsons, reader in the parish. I'm leading the service this morning and will be joined by Reverend Nicky Bullivant. As today is the first Sunday in Lent, Nicky will share with us some thoughts of Jesus being in the wilderness and what that might mean for us. As we have our service, please join in with the words of the prayers and sing along with the songs and hymns. And if there are any songs or hymns that are new to you, then feel free to go back and listen again and join in as the tune becomes familiar to you. Before we start, I bring the sad announcement that Reverend Brian Green, who served as vicar in the parish of Tidenham during the 1990s, and many of us will remember him with great fondness, has died. Let's hold Sheila and the family in our thoughts and prayers at this time. And as we come together for our worship, let us pray. Almighty God, eternal and strong, God of feasting and fasting, of mountain top and desert, even though we are scattered and separated from each other, you gather us together by your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, as we follow Jesus, wherever he leads us, even if into a wilderness, may we feed on your living bread and taste your water of life. We come hungry and thirsty for more of you, God. Amen. Before we sing our first song together, I invite you to think about the different kinds of roads you've travelled along, either today, recently, or in past months or years. And what kind of road has brought you here? By streams of abundance, walking through wilderness, sun shining down on you, or a road marked with suffering. Let's join Ewan and Janice as they lead us in the singing of Blessed Be The Name.
in the Lent season, it is often the tradition to remember the Ten Commandments, those commandments that God gave Moses when the people of Israel were in the wilderness. If the people had not complained so much, if the people had paid attention to what God had been saying to them, if they had actually obeyed God instead of going their own way, perhaps their journey to the promised land would have been more likely 40 days rather than the 40 years it ended up being. With those thoughts in our minds, let us together confess our sins. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us, Father, forgive us, save us, and help us for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son father forgive us save us and help us amen and so may the God of love bring us back to himself forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord amen John Parsons will now read the Gospel for us, and after the Gospel, Nikki will share her thoughts with us. The reading is from Mark 1, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. Lent is traditionally a time of deep spiritual reflection, where we journey with Jesus, following him as closely as we can, as he draws ever nearer to the cross. In our Gospel reading today, we see Jesus being baptised by John and then being driven by the Spirit into the rough and harsh places of the wilderness. Lent can be a time when we are more aware of our own rough and harsh places, those rough places where we experience the discomfort of times of challenge and grief, and also become more aware of those rough places in our own lives that need Christ's transforming touch. This morning, we follow in Jesus' footsteps as he enters the wilderness for 40 days of fasting and temptation by Satan. There are many accounts in both the Old and New Testaments of people being in the wilderness. They were there for a variety of reasons. Sometimes they were lost, sometimes desperate, sometimes with a plan, sometimes with no idea with what they are doing there. But as we think about Jesus in the wilderness, we see someone who enters the wilderness with a clear sense of who he is. And someone who leaves the wilderness having confronted temptation and who as a result is ready to live out his life purpose. The wilderness is a dry and desert place. 
There are no distinguishing landmarks to be found, and you can easily become lost or disorientated. It can be a place that is fraught with danger, a place of exile and isolation, a place of hunger and thirst. But the wilderness isn't necessarily a geographical place, though. There are emotional, social and spiritual wildernesses too. The wilderness can be within us as well as all around us. But on the bright side, the wilderness can be a place of self-discovery, of renewal and transformation, a place where we can encounter God in new and exciting ways. According to Mark, Jesus was driven into the wilderness. It was involuntary. The past year could well be described as a wilderness that we've been driven into against our will too. Many of us feel tired, isolated, lonely. We may feel disorientated and lost as we are unable to do many of the familiar things that gave us a sense of meaning and purpose and belonging. The big calamities of life can drive us kicking and screaming into the wilderness too. A serious diagnosis, a redundancy, a long period of unemployment, a midlife crisis, the death of a loved one, the loss of our faith in God. Anything can drive us into the wilderness where we can feel unsupported, isolated, afraid and alone. But today, as we journey with Jesus through Lent, we enter the wilderness intentionally, on purpose. The wilderness can be a gift to us if we allow ourselves to live through it, learn from it and be transformed by it. And as we enter the wilderness, we, like Jesus, are entering as God's beloved children, known and loved by him and accompanied by his Holy Spirit. And with the Spirit's help, we can choose to confront those things that are obstacles between us and God. It's when we're in the wilderness that we're able to distinguish the things that hold body and soul together from the baggage that weighs us down. During Lent, we have time and space to reflect on our spiritual journey and how life events are affecting our faith and our relationship with God. But being in the wilderness will make us feel vulnerable and there's always the temptation to move on, to escape. It can be uncomfortable as we come face to face with our own inner restlessness. But it's often in the uncomfortable desert places of our lives that we can begin to see again or to see more clearly. It can be a place where we recognise and acknowledge our need and our hunger for God. And as we talk about being hungry, we're reminded that Jesus fasted when he was in the wilderness. And during Lent, we too may find that fasting from certain things can help us to hear God's voice a lot more clearly. In fasting, we are taking an intentional break from something, something that we're seeking to remove from our lives, something that is keeping our minds off God. In fasting, we're making more space for God in our lives. There are many ways in which we can fast. We can fast from a particular food type, for example, chocolate, cake or wine. We can fast from social media, from television, from gossiping, complaining and unnecessary spending. And as we fast from those things that we like to feast on, we will find that we're hungering more for God. But Lent isn't just about giving things up. It can be a time in which we can adopt a new spiritual practice, not to prove to ourselves or to God that we can do it, but in order to grow closer to God and to grow in obedience and in love for him. Spiritual practices can be seen as tools for our wilderness journey, helping us to draw closer to God. They can deepen our knowledge and understanding of God's presence with us. Several years ago, I adopted the practice of setting my alarm on my phone to go off at 9, 12, 3 and 6. And when my alarm goes off, I pause to be still and say a short prayer. As many of you know, I tend to live my life at 100 miles an hour. But I found that this simple spiritual practice has helped me to slow down, to refocus 
and to be more aware of God's presence with me. Prayer, fasting and acts of service are the spiritual practices that are often associated with the season of Lent. Have you possibly considered adopting a new spiritual practice during Lent? Why not join the Lent course on Wednesday evenings via Zoom or the daily pilgrimage at home? Resources for these are available on Instagram, Facebook and the weekly briefing. And there are also hard copies available in the porches of the three parish churches. These are strange times and it is upsetting for many of us that we can't meet up face to face. But as Vicar David reminded us in his weekly parish briefing, Lent is an individual journey, but it's also a communal one. We can encourage each other, support one another, and help one another in love and faith. And I pray that as we journey through Lent, individually and in community, may we rediscover our thirst and hunger for God. May we encounter him in the desert place, in the wilderness. May we be renewed and forever changed. Amen. We now come to that time in our service where we affirm our faith together. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next song may be new to some of you. If it is, then read the words as they come onto the screen. They're like a prayer to Almighty God. And following uh, the song, Marilyn and JR will lead us in our prayers.
So we come together now in prayer. When we say, in your loving kindness, O oh God, please respond, have mercy and hear our prayer. God of grace, your kingdom draws near to us in your Son. Increase in your church trust in the fulfilment of your promises. Fill our hearts with joy of your good news announced to us. In your loving kindness, O oh God, have and mercy and hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of grace, prophetic witness led to John being arrested. Be with all who courageously make a stand for justice and liberty. Give us faith to trust in the victory of right. In your loving kindness, O oh God. Have, have mercy and, and hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of grace, you set the world in a universe of awesome wonder. Awaken all peoples to the urgent need for ecological balance. In your mercy, bring humanity back from the brink of self-destruction. In your loving kindness, O oh God, have mercy, mercy and hear our prayer. God of grace, in the wilderness your son had to face the limits of humanity. Hold in your tender care all who suffer. We put our trust in you, O oh Lord. In your loving kindness, O oh God, have, have mercy, mercy and hear our prayer. prayer. God of grace, in baptism we are united with Christ's death and resurrection. In this hope we give thanks and commend you to all who have died in the faith of Christ. Especially we thank you for the life of our friend and brother, the Reverend Brian Green. And we pray for Sheila and the family at this time of their grief. In your loving kindness, O oh God, have and mercy, mercy and, and hear our prayer. prayer. Amen. Amen. Together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we have forgiven those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The notices for this week. I said about uh, Brian Green uh, having died. Details of his funeral, which will be available to join in online, are on the weekly notice sheet. I'd also encourage you with the daily reflections. And these are available in a printed booklet, uh, available at the entrance porch porches to all our churches, or you can download them from the website, or daily, on the Tidenham Church Facebook page. During Lent, there's also an opportunity to gather each Wednesday evening for a period of reflection and sharing. And um, details to join this online Zoom are also on the notice sheet, as is the link for the Zoom coffee time at 11.30 this Sunday morning. Sorry to those who have joined the service later in the day. We close our worship with the hymn 40 Days and 40 Nights.
and our closing prayers. Holy Spirit, fill us with your water of life, so that even as we walk through the desert, we may know your refreshing and share it with those around us. Lead us as you led Jesus to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. As we journey together through this season of Lent, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.